cyclists are the worst specimens in the entire Milky Way galaxy. Now that is quite a statement I am sure you are saying to yourself. When someone asks you who are the worst types of human beings in the world in history, you probably think, I don't know, Putin, Piers Morgan, Mark Zuckerberg, possibly Hitler depending on your personal beliefs. But when I think of the worst people on the planet, I immediately, without hesitation, think of cyclists. What a weird thing to say when comparing the worst people on our planet and in our history you might say. Nah mate, it isn't. I describe cyclists as small slimy snails, now let me explain. If you try to avoid them and let them get on with their own business, however if you stand on one by accident, you hear that crunch, you go oh no. Check your shoe, make sure there's no guts or brains all over it, or in this case, no damage to the car. You then immediately carry on walking and forget that it ever happened, and never think about it again. Or in this case, you get in your car and drive off completely unapologetic as the selfish sausage in Lycra was taking up too much of the road. This is a serious debate and a serious argument. Have you ever been driving down a windy road and suddenly you see a cyclist pull out in front of you dangerously, selfishly? Yes, is the answer. What happens when you see this cyclist? Well, if we were playing GTA and driving in our tanks or possibly our vent doors if we are an idiot and bought shark cards or maybe we have just stolen one from the same road for the past 10 years but seriously rockstar i thought you made incredible games with smart ai which mongrel keeps leaving their car here for me to steal anyway if we're playing gta you'll run them over get out of the car put a full magazine in their head and then throw a molotov just to make sure they ain't getting up then you escape just before anyone gets too suspicious and calls the cop in real life however it's long it's boring unlike gta as soon as you escape the circle the police don't give up you actually get investigated remembered for life making your life a bit sticky can be a bit problematic anyway cyclists are fat narcissistic pigs now hold up now they feel it's necessary to take up as much room as a car even though they are like a baby child compared to a fully grown elephant they are so very small and do not require all that space so when you try to take them over and they are weaving in and out like they're playing mario kart it makes you see red and you want to turn the side of the road red but hold on as the sun stares you in the background of space a gap for you to go past they have left the appropriate amount of room and space for such a small and insignificant creature. You check your mirrors, engage into third gear, and suddenly there is another one heading towards you, in the middle of the road like the last one. So once again, you're stuck doing 10 miles per hour behind a man wearing pyjamas that are far too tight for him, especially with a man the size of the Bahamas who lives on a diet of protein bars, ready salted crisps and Stellas, and probably ham sandwiches. Now as the sun glistens down on you, you see something shimmering in the distance. Oh Christ, not one, not two, not three. But there is a whole posse of cyclists heading towards you. Now, the rules of the road is the Nazis, known as the cyclists, are allowed single file down any road. For all you simpletons, that means one after the other, or in a line. Singularly. Why is it every time you see a group of two or three all the way up to three million, do they feel it's need to take up the whole entire road? It is a joke. It is a disgrace. And the only fitting punishment for people who do this is public flogging. Now, I have some ideas to all the senior government officials watching and listening to this. Feel free to reach out. My details are down below. But let's say if you've seen Game of Thrones, you know, Cersei Lannister walking butt naked down the street you get the general picture i would like to point out that i know i am possibly using a little bit of hyperbole here and there sprinkled in like a little bit of salt i want to make it clear i am very serious about this and i am very passionate and i will fight this course to my very last dying breath i am also very serious about the punishments and they commit the second worst crimes in the entire universe some may argue it is in fact worse than paedophilia however i am a bit on the fence i'm undecided on that one the government understands the kind of nuisance they are however as they are the, the government understands Understands the kind of nuisance they are and that they are the lowest of the low. But they tried segregating from the rest of society by giving them their own space called the cycle lane. Now I think this was a brilliant idea in theory. I have one slight line for improvement though. A way we can, you know, improve this, get them even more segregated from society is uh, add concrete walls in and around the lanes so we don't actually have to look at them in their horrible attire. That, that would just be stupendous. That would be fantastic. Thank you so much. Sounds brilliant, doesn't it? Segregation. It's clearly worked so many times in history in such effective ways. Only one problem. They don't bloody use them. What's the point in having these segregation methods just not to enforce them? Even on buses or trains they have cycle spaces where they can stand far away from the normal people of society. Again, the spandex individuals choose not to abide to them. I honestly think it's because they are a little spasdomicated. I've come up with this theory. They just clearly haven't been educated right and haven't learned the art of reading. Now we can't blame them for that. But they need reformation. We should just arrest them, get them back into 
to school. Minimum sentence, you ask me for ignoring cycle lanes, well it should be confiscation of the bikes and get a group of people who have recently called into the I have been affected by cyclist helpline, link in the description once again, to use sledgehammers to destroy them as they watch from inside a prison cell. Now I think this is a brilliant idea, it would clearly make the people who have called the helpline feel a lot better and drop any anxiety and depression they might have from these horrible individuals and again I am not a horrible bastard so if they do it once break a chain maybe give them a dead leg so they can't cycle back I'm not a horrible person if it happens a second time well time to call out the sledgehammers this thing about cyclists as well is they think the world revolves around them they believe they are the center of the universe and that they are sent by God to cause chaos and annoy other human beings when they venture from their own lands of the cycle lanes and are on our roads they have the audacity to glare at us even though they are on our turf you overtake and don't leave enough room because you don't regard them as actual human life you're the bad guy you're the bully on the block nah mate i am hoping to change this sign the petition down below my god i've made it my life's work to have cyclists shot up to space sign the petition down below to have cyclists shot up to space on their bikes and let's see how long they last out there on them seriously though i think i've shown more respect to ants and probably even my dog's turds than i have to a cyclist but h cycling is good for the environment it's better than driving a car they don't require fuel they keep you fit and healthy and increase all over mood i didn't hear any of that but okay it, it might increase your mood make you slightly fitter but think about all the clothes they wear like what is it made of just picture the little poor kids in sweatshorts making them like 50 pennies a day whilst i sit in my one pound top from poundland much better for the environment i promise you also importing these bikes and getting them across from wherever they come from all the metals all the materials what are they made of they don't just get teleported here and most importantly the poor cars that are slowed down and blocked they obviously release more gases they're a bit trumpy as they are driving and they're burning fuel for longer see i am right and they are wrong you can he deny this i've just given you all the proof and evidence you will ever need to come to your own conclusion now finally we touch slightly on what should happen to those who don't follow the rules and regulations but i want to dive slightly deeper think of the ant versus the boot metaphor ant boot the cyclists are the ant we the people who this affects are the boot do you get where i'm going with this all i'm going to say is that all that practice on gta shouldn't be wasted for all the many people out there who have perfected the art of getting cyclists out of the way so they can carry on with their business as humanity we need to rise up and fight the tyranny and patriarchy and all the big words used to describe people who oppress us in conclusion cyclists are the bane of our existence and are literally the second worst type of human beings only losing the top spot to trophy hunter killers you know them twats who kill giraffes just to have a cheeky selfie with the thing and then leave it to rot in conclusion number two we should all rebel and fight back against these terrorists i'm sure i've shown you the reason why they should be locked up and sent to space they are the biggest problem and the biggest crisis we face and also the sole reason as to why global warming is on the rise i'm sure you agree thanks to my amazingly balanced and detailed argument and i really have left no space for opposing beliefs or opinions as i have already shot them down or blown them out of the water before they they can rush to the comment section and start typing like little freaks in conclusion number three thanks for watching click the link in the description to fight back and get these neo-nazi terrorists back where they belong in a car Rumor.